Um, very good afternoon to everyone, and thank you very much for coming for our global entrepreneurship class. Uh, with us today, we have uh, yet another speaker. Uh, she's uh, uh, a very well-known person in the media, and she's a, a broadcaster on BFM. Um, I think she's one of the very innovative people, and she's she always engages her speakers uh, in a very intellectual manner. And I would like you all to join me to welcome Freda Liu. Thank you. Can you use that mic? The, the mic? the mic works or? Yes. The yeah, the it does. Works. Can you all hear, you all can hear me, yeah? Uh, anyway, uh, good afternoon, and it's nice to be here. I, the reason, one of the reasons I came here is actually because of Professor uh, Mushtaq. You know, I, when I had this conversation with him last year, it's very enlightening to speak to someone who's totally engaged about the whole everything about education and try to make a change. Um, a little bit about BFM before I go into that. Who listens to BFM? Oh, come on, some of you. Oh, do you? Okay. Right, okay, it's liar. Okay, so I mean, uh, who was I talking to just now? Um, during Jeffrey, he says 10% of his time he listens to BFM. Um, so the rest of you, if you haven't heard of BFM, uh, you would, okay? And uh, I think as you, as you grow a little older or as you, if you get that entrepreneurial spirit, uh, and even if you don't, right, things that matter, your, your habits might change and you might start listening to BFM. I'll talk a little bit about my boss. Uh, because obviously he started the station. I joined uh, 2009, uh, three months after the station started. I was working for uh, IBM, very well, in a corporate job. I was there for, for a long time already. I was working in public relations in IBM. And it came at that point in time where it was, I just didn't understand what I was doing in IBM anymore. Great company, but, and the timing was right. I've always been intrigued by entrepreneurs. And so he said that we want to start this business station. He had no connections. We're not related to any of the big boys, the Astros, the media primas, those people. And he says, I want to do something different. I want to do about talk radio. So I had this comment and he said, well, think about it. Um, because as you know, with, with IBM, it's a comfortable job, you know, and this is an unproven thing. And luck would have it, I talked to IBM and I said, you know, I want to take two years leave of absence to try something else. And IBM said, go ahead. So I was technically still working for IBM and doing something else at the radio station. They didn't think it was competitive. So I said, okay, great. So nothing to lose. If the station flops, hey, I've, got, I've still got a job, yeah? Um, so when I, when I met with Malik, um, he's, he was very different in the sense that he also, he was a Harvard, uh, Harvard MBA, uh, was a lawyer, um, and uh, was working for Boston Consulting Group, you know, in, in a consultancy. And he started another business before called Kale Classifieds, which was uh, these uh, papers, newspaper ads, right? And that business set him back uh, two, three hundred thousand ringgit, right? And it, 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 it flopped, okay? And that was the kind of money he was in debt, which, you know, I guess is, is a lot of money. And he said he had uh, loan sharks, you know, the guy with the gold ring and the tattoos coming, knocking his door. And during that period, uh, he got a job offer with Job Street, right? And the pers and he says, you know what situation I'm in. I've been, been in a business that failed, and I still have this loan. Well, this loan to settle. And the guy said, I'm going to write a check for you to end that loan uh, on the condition you work with us for two, three years. So good deal. And so he worked with them, and then after that, I think he, he got to this whole idea about mobile and all that. He also had some experience with Maxis and Yahoo. And when he decided to start the station, it was something he actually wanted to do for the longest time. This was before you all were born, uh, when Astro first started, when Hits, Mix, all these stations started maybe about 15 years ago, 15, I mean, close to 20 years ago. And he actually wanted to start a business station then. But with all these other format radio, um, it was like, how do I even compete in this space? It's not the right time, there are too many players. I would be just lost in the crowd, I have no money. So it was something that he always wanted to do. So, and incidentally, one of our investors is uh, Mark Chang, okay, who is the founder of Job Street. So the person that he worked for is one of the investors for BFM. So that was 2008 uh, when, we start, when he started. 
very few people and then we he decided to come on and I, I joined in 2009 so you know this is a story for me because I've seen the company grow I've seen the early days when there were conflict yeah there was conflict because there was someone um, I think I was the oddball because I used to work in corporate but I had TV and radio experience but most people were either presenters right from radio and then they were business journalists writers business journalists and then trying to mix that where you're talking business but you don't have presentation skills and then so how should the business be run it was unproven right it was unproven so we went through this period of the first six months a lot of arguments a lot of shouting a lot of people leaving and then some staying on and I was just like oh well whatever happens two years so it doesn't work I'm out of here so I stayed right I wasn't bothered with the politics um, and so after that period, I think we went, we, went, we sat down, and this is very important, we actually sat down together to decide on what the values were. I don't know when you look at, you know, I know you've got your, your values or your mission statement here. We actually sat down and think, what are our values? What is our mission, right? And our mission was to make Malaysians more open-minded, more receptive to ideas. I, I, that's a proper one, but we didn't want to say Malaysians open-minded, Malaysians more open-minded that was our big mission uh, the smaller mission everything we do um, the values is to educate to entertain to enlighten and to resonate so whatever we do whatever interviews we do whatever interactions we do and we've gone into other businesses uh, and I'll tell you that but those values remain so we we meet someone and we interview that person and we don't feel that that person is emitting those values then we'll say, okay, I think we, we, we stop it. You know, you, you get the idea. When you're not connecting with somebody, so you, you don't continue with that. So that was very important for us, the values. But that, was, that took a lot of arguments and differences culturally before we came up with our own culture. And as you move on, you understand that. So this is something that we actually share with marketers, right? When we're trying to get people to buy our ads. So people who want to know the story. So, and again, right? I don't know how it is. You'll ask questions to the end or you'll raise your hands and ask questions now. Uh, okay, I leave it up to you, but it is important to ask questions, right? And I, we're just having this conversation. It happens into adulthood when you start working and maybe more of Malaysian phenomenon than anything that we don't ask questions. When people who ask the questions control the situation when you ask the questions, yeah? But I find that when we have our BFM events, we have no shortage of people asking questions. So, you know, feel free to ask questions as and when, yeah? Okay. So, as I was saying, it was already a mature radio industry at that time, and he decided, okay, maybe it's time, because if you look at a person, how the, the brand grows, of someone in their 20s, I think even the case right now, who listens to hits? Who listens to, who listens to hits? All right. Uh, who listens to red? Uh, who listens to fly? No? Okay, a couple of people listen to fly. Okay. Who listens to mix? Uh, light? Really? People listen to light? Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's, that, that was what I was trying to get at. <laughs> uh, okay, that was, the, that was the career progression, right? Someone would start off in their 20s listening to kids, mix, and then light. And then he came to me and he said to me, who, do you listen to radio? I said, no, I don't listen to radio anymore. You know, uh, it just, uh, I don't want to hear the silly jokes. Maybe when you're younger, you do, but then it's like you, you stop wanting to listen to these things. And so what happens after light, right? And he felt then that the timing was right. And I think that's a very important lesson as well, the right timing. You know, sometimes you, if he, I think if he had started this the same time as Astro hits mix, it probably wouldn't work. It'd probably get crowded in the noise because we don't have marketing budgets. And we still, we started off this business with $30,000, 13000 ringgit for marketing and it was at the back of taxis if you all have seen it yeah and we still continue so it was a mature radio industry at the time and I guess what we're trying to do we we're trying to disrupt we've heard of this word we're trying to disrupt the industry where something that's been happening all this time suddenly something just Air Asia disrupted the airline industry right you're all born then uh, so something just happens and disrupted it so I think at that point we disrupted we're still just in the clown valley but I know we're already making inroads around the world, but we're not looking at the Klang Valley. We're looking at the world, right? That's the power of, of radio. So it's a mature radio industry, okay? But, okay, we play on BFM, yeah? 
but frustrations many. So the people just stop listening, people don't find value. Um, so that was even, I'll tell you a couple of things as well. Even when you talk about radio ads, the reality is the bulk of the money is spent on the hits, the red and the fly, that kind of group because people say, oh, we want to get the young, the 25 to 35 year olds. They're losing money in the other age group because it's quite undefined. Okay, so that's the industry, how the industry is formulating. Uh, and then there's certain segments that do very well, certain segments don't do very well. BM stations do very well. The English channels are very competitive. Um, so there is, there's all that, yeah? So, but frustrations many. Okay, target working professionals, okay, with news views and interviews, okay, that was the, the idea behind it. Okay, educate, entertain, enlighten. And then I think he put resonate. Okay, I remember that very well, educate, entertain, and enlighten, because I came up with it, okay. So, <laughs> I just, so the brand genesis, the um, BFM is very boring. Is business FM, right? It's so. How do you make it personal? How do you make it your own? How do you make it stick? The idea behind black and white was for, for printing reasons. It's cheap. You know, this was the idea, but it also sends a bit of uh, there's a bit of s seriousness to black and white. But we wanted to make it very individual, and that's why we came in at the back. Actually, at the back of all our business cards, we have except for swear words which is very easy with the F. <laughs> okay, the back of all our business card, what BFM means to us, although it's BFM, mine is to be fruitful and multiply, right? And whatever, you got, you know, bodacious, funky mama, I have one colleague who does that, you know, bootylicious, whatever, whatever, you know, so it's up to you. So we, there was a certain amount of seriousness, but there was also a certain amount of fun. And who says business has to be serious? business i think what we've managed to do over the years is to make business accessible and in the process you gotta have fun along the way yeah so the tone and manner was and that we've got something serious to say um but we can do it in a fun way you know because we think of business stations like the cnn or or you know the bloomberg and all that and they're fairly serious right so who says it has to be serious so we're very clear about that and it was a simple, this, this guy that worked with us, he is from McCann Erickson, his name is Sue. He, uh, Zhu, he actually came up with the whole concept for BFM. You know, like how, how do you still say you're a business station and make it personal? So it was a whole thought process. So, I mean, it started in 2006 before we actually came about, right? Thank you. Okay, acronyms. Okay, I was going through the acronyms. And that was the big idea for us, okay? Uh, so there's a big play on words and then and people love participating when we ask them you know win a win a prize for this and even now other brands that have like worked with us they also want to leverage on that co-branding that they also i remember we had the promotion with malaysia airlines a couple of years ago um, and they also used the bfm thing with you know whatever program they had so it was a couple of years ago um boosting free markets right bfm Whenever. And we try to be current and topical, okay? Busy finding money, you all seen that one at the back of taxis and all that. Okay, I should have brought some, okay? Bro blogger friendly Malaysia, all right? Are we, question mark. And also, break for Middle East, I think there was, you know, uh, whatever is happening in the Middle East. Bond frustrates money penny, all right? So um, if you have heard that, and you know who this is, right? Yes. <laughs> Bodaciously fantastic music, which is true. If you have a certain age group, we have changed. Our music has changed somewhat. Um, okay. Uh, Benitez, Ferguson, Mind Games, right? So, between four MPs, I think there was, there was a, I don't know which by-election there was, but uh, there was something going on or whatever. So, like, whatever's topical, we try to come up with it. Uh, boring party manager. <laughs> okay, 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 read carefully. <laughs> okay, okay, my legato. Okay, so execution how do we go about doing this? Yeah, so black and white, as I was saying, cost reasons, real reason, but it looks really nice. 
okay? Um, okay, so even to this day, and I think we've, we've sort of broken that barrier somewhat um, for people to buy in from, you know, like they would want to be associated, trying to get advertisers to work with us. And if you understand the radio industry, it's very easy to have spot ads where you listen, there's an ad going on. So we want to move beyond that where can we do something that's beyond that, whether we, we do that with events, whether we do that with a special interview, where we do that with a special program, that it's not just a spot ad, but it will, you will, because sometimes when you have, you hear, listen to these ads, you're really switched off because, oh yeah, okay, every 15 minutes I get that. So how do you get that recall or that association with whatever brand a little longer, right? So we want to move beyond that. So the buying from middle managers, okay? So this was a couple of years ago, a marketing survey, right? And 1.65, Fly FM, okay, BFM, question mark, right? And to this day, we're not audited, okay? The reason we're not audited is the num we are only in the Klang Valley, if you, and the way surveys are done is actually done with, no offense, housewives, because they're the one listening in, what time do they listen? And if you're the one that's buying the survey, you will want the survey, you will want the questions to be asked in certain, such a way that it will show, right? So it's easy, you know, if you look, look into the advertising industry, it's easy for someone to, the media, media buyers, the media planners, to just tell someone, oh, go with them because they've got so many people listening to them, right? Now, the danger with that is you've got a lot of people, you've got a lot of people, but are they really listening, right? If you look at the, the edge, uh, which incidentally has 27% of BFM, just very recently last year, um, and they give us, you know, the, uh, the reason why Malik agreed with them being investors is that you have no editorial say in how we run the business. Um, if you look at the Star newspaper and you look at the Edge newspaper, the Star is three, four hundred thousand, the Edge is about sixty thousand. But the amount of ads that go in into the Edge for a small paper is a, is a lot, right? And the reason is, who are you targeting? Right? So when you talk about your business, who are you targeting? Right now, when you go into business, even if you open a restaurant, right, it's not, you're not serving everybody. Right? You're not, you, you have to think, where is my target audience? Who are they? Because right? we, we can't be everything to everybody. We try. Yeah? So this was uh, uh, the, the, what we're fighting for. One of the things that has uh, helped us is podcasts. And I'll go into podcast numbers in a moment. Okay. So, uh, but Twitter tells a different story. These were just some of the figures that I shared uh, just as of April 2017. So hits.fm, all the hands raised, 227,000 followers. Fly FM, 115,000 um, uh, followers. BFM Radio has 59.5 thousand, 500 followers. Grown organically. We don't do anything like, oh, if you like us, if you follow us on Twitter, we don't do any of that. Just people choosing to follow us, yeah? And if you look at mix and red and light, they're just those numbers, right? Why do they follow us? Because we tell them there's an interview coming up. This is a link to a podcast. Da, da, da. So people sometimes just, oh, there's a link to a podcast. They'll actually download the podcast and listen to it later. So, you know, these are the numbers that have just grown on its own, right? In the last uh, five, six years, yeah? So, Okay, Radio Broadcaster of the Year. This was again with, I think, Advertising Marketing Magazine. So in 2011, um, we were listed among marketers as number three. 2012, we went up to uh, the first. Okay, so among marketers, surveys, they know. They know that this is where the audience is, but somehow, you know, it's not translated. But I'll have to say, though, in the last five years, the first year was a challenge. Uh, the second year, we were getting advertisers. The third year was people said, we've got some spare cash, let's give some to BFM. Maybe into the fourth year and fifth year, peop, uh, advertisers would actually say, let's allocate some money for BFM. We were actually in their you know, uh, radar, right? So I think it's, it's slowly changing. Um, and even the whole idea of what we're trying to do, getting people on board, you know, so that we've come, to, we've come a long way. Okay, okay. Um, so again, this was from the advertising and marketing. This is a June 2012 issue. So in terms of perceived BFM listenership profile, is preferred radio station to reach MDs and CEOs, top one, okay, 89.9. High net worth individuals, 89.9, top one. Property buyers, business travelers, 
insurance and investment bias, okay? Parents, okay, we're with this IFM, it was top three still, car buyers, right? So you then, pe when people see this, um, they'll take it very different. So we do, if you listen to our ads right now, and I guess it's best on this, based on this survey, we're getting a lot of property uh, advertisers as well, right? But we, we, want, we do tell them to move away from just spot advertising because it can be redundant, almost repetitive. You almost don't want to listen to it, yeah? So, challenges, okay? Bringing forth monetization. That was something we had to do. And so one of the things that we were very concerned, we, we call ourselves VFM Media. We're not just about radio. That's one channel. That's the mass channel. We realized that what do you consume right now? You're watching your YouTube, right? That's what's happening. Uh, people are going on Twitter, on Instagram, and that's, that's the way forward. And still, you know, talking to advertisers, bridging the gap, telling them that that's the way people are going, you know, both sides that's happening. So we are moving in that direction. Um, the other things that we've gone into in, t th in terms of getting the money in, uh, we've recently gone into a business school uh, so that's for general management program. We work with universities, uh, lecturer professors from across the world. And the idea is that they've got regional experience and also some theoretical experience, but they've got some work experience. So we've got that as a business school. We also have events targeted at entrepreneurs. And they have, uh, we have a following that way. We usually have a full house. And, and that's also for us very important <coughs> to get on the ground to engage with our listeners. Yeah? Okay. So um, tech savvy, there are actually a lot more that I couldn't share with you, but a little bit about the, the, the kind of people, right? So everybody, 80% would have a mini notebook. We actually have figures of our podcast where they're consuming. Are they Android users or are they iOS users? iOS users, are they, are they listening to us from the phone? Are they listening from us from a tablet, right? So smartphone, 64% of the people would have a smartphone. And then, um, so all these are the, we, we do the survey. Some people, while they're working, they've got their headphones on, they're listening to us as well, right? So it's very important as well. Then we also see <coughs> from there, internally, how long they listen to. Sometimes it gets dropped off halfway because they're bored, and then we have to think, do our content, will our, con will our interviews have to be shorter if the attention span is only so long, right? These are things that we have to think about. Uh, maybe break it down into you know, smaller bite-sized pieces to suit the audience, right? Because at the end of the day, it's about the audience, it's not about us, yeah? Okay, product baseline, okay? Someone said this, who said this? Someone kind, very kind said, the only radio station Malaysia. Okay, thank you for being. Who wrote this? Anyway, okay. So who owns the brand? Um, and this is very important. If you want to get your customer engagement, right, who owns the brand? And this is something that we have on, we have a very interactive, <coughs> Twitter, Facebook, we put something up, people communicate with us. And it's not like, I love the song, you know, kind of thing, you know. Um, so they, they, they do connect, we do interact, and that was very important. And that was something we probably started last year. Uh, we actually hired someone to take care of social marketing, who responds, who, who do all these things, and we're very current. Of course, they know 24, you know, overnight we don't, but generally we, we do engage with them. Um, so that's very important, uh, engaging with the public. Okay, so one th something came up and then people just started commenting on it, yeah? And sometimes we just sit back and watch what they're all talking about. And it's important because the topics that we come up with has got to be whatever is trending, whatever people are talking about. Uh, so we can't be too, you know, I mean, um, there's certain, there, there, I'm going to talk about certain stations, but you, you can't, sometimes we have to talk about the tough things because it's never been talked about, but people are talking about it in the coffee shops. <coughs> people are talking about it elsewhere. So if we don't, you know, how do you connect? So we want to bring that mama conversation to the radio, right? Because these are the things you talk about, right? So we can't, uh, with, with the internet anymore, we can't say certain things don't exist when they do exist, right? So that's all I'm saying, okay. Okay, so we do get in trouble with the, uh, okay, what was it? Bra okay, so pop quiz, what? Braun, Ferrari? What could it be? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Ryan Donald, okay. What was I getting? Okay, Bujai Air. Fights. MAS. 
I think there was a sort of topical there. Huh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> think about it. I didn't bring any prizes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, a couple of things where we are today. Um, this is from a Street Science article. One of the most popular stations in the Clown Valley. Um, Malaysia Kitty has built a reputation for his more liberal and bold approach to his business kind of fast reporting, which says apart from Malaysia's big three private radio groups. Okay. Okay. Q and A. Now, maybe before we go into Q and A, what I, I just a little bit of the entrepreneur side. And, and I, I, when I meet with a lot of entrepreneurs, I've also gotten very excited about the whole idea of being in business, right? And it, it just, I guess, it gets into your bloodstream as well. And it, this has been a very exciting journey for me. I actually wrote a book. I got to put a bit. Oh, okay. This is the BFM team. Actually, a lot, a lot of them have left. No, not a lot of them. One, two. You can count. A couple of them have left. Um, but yeah, this is the the BFM team. Okay, what I've actually done is I've actually written a book, okay? And the reason I wrote the book was, um, this was last year, I've done about over 5,000 interviews. I've interviewed the likes of uh, Julian Assange, uh, he was fun, and uh, who else have I done? Nick Vujicic, you know, a lot of people, it's Martin Cooper, the inventor of the mobile phone, you know? Uh, Ralph Bayer, the inventor of the video games, you know? And, um, it, and also, of course, a lot of local people as well. And I find that a lot of times in Malaysia, we don't go out and talk about our brands enough. We don't talk about how good we are. And that's to our detriment, that we don't know how to come out there or, or to carve the story into many ways. If you talk about crowdfunding, I know this is one of the projects you've got. If you look at um, Kickstarter, <coughs> they're pushing a product that hasn't existed. They're asking for money for something that isn't there yet, right? And that's PR, and that's marketing, and that's getting out there. And that's why, like, even to stand apart, you've got to be able, when you start your own business, you'll be able to come out to the media, talk about it. And a lot of Asian companies are really good, but they don't come out enough to talk about it. Either they're shy, they're secretive, or, I don't know, face, or, you know, whatever, right? And, and that's to our loss, right? When we've got great stories. So that was the reason I actually wrote the book. More to come, yeah? So, okay. Open for questions, so I'll finish very quickly, but... Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah. Um, okay, um, hello. I just want to ask, actually, why, why, why a radio station, sort of, you know? Um, I mean, you could have started, like, a newspaper, magazine, or why, why did you decide to go to the radio media? Okay, um, I think newspapers at the time, we do have a lot of newspapers. In terms of radio, there is none of this sort, right? And, uh, and you are stuck, you have a captive audience. Before the, the podcast, you have a captive audience in the morning, you're stuck in the car, you have a captive audience returning, right? Um, the beauty of how we've extended that is, of course, the power of our podcast as well. So, like, you know, we have uh, 2 million downloads of our podcast every month. But that was the reason. And I think if you, if you look at a business, another business newspaper, it will be another business newspaper. But there's no other business station at that time. And I was very intrigued about that. And like, okay, it's not just talk, 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 and then, you know, or talk a, a lot more music than talk. You know? So that was, yeah, give it a shot. Uh, thank you, Ochi. Yes. Another one. Uh, what those uh, well, say difficult issues? When when do you decide? When do you okay. You know when, when to put out the difficult issues? When do I? Okay. Like, These know, are. This is uh, very interesting. We actually meet every Tuesday um, and decide. For example, okay. With I'll tell you two incidents. This is the most recent one with the MH370, right? So we heard it. Someone just got the station, just ran with it, and it was quite fluid. Uh, and he didn't ask permission for anybody. Someone just came on. We work with uh, Astro Awani, they're really great people. Um, they're, they're very different. They let us play the, the press conferences on there. So okay, then after that, when it went on and on and on, then we say, when do we stop talking about it, right? And I guess when the, Najib said, you know, the journey has ended for them, we said, okay, fine. And, and people are tired already, right? Not that they're not concerned, but people are tired of listening to it. And, you know, we have to move on. So we have these meetings, these editorial meetings on a weekly basis, twice. And then we, we say, do we stop right now? The other thing was, we actually, uh, the, the multimedia commission, whatever, MC, MC, they absolutely love us, okay? Um, I'm being funny. They absolutely love us. They, 
a lot of times as well, um, they will they will say certain things, and we may disagree or disagree. But we say if everyone's talking about it, and we don't talk about it, then we're not being fair to our listeners. And it's very different. Somehow, when it's written about the papers, it doesn't get as much flack as when it's on radio. I don't know why. I don't know why, right? Um, because I guess when we have talk back and people start calling and complaining and all that, I, I don't know why we seem to get into a little bit more trouble for. So we also sort of like, um, and we try to be unbiased a lot of times. We try as much as possible to get both sides of the story. A couple of years ago, we had, uh, I don't know if you heard this, just look for the podcast, a lot of downloads in that one. Uh, Sisters in Islam and the Obedient Wives Club. You all know the Obedient Wives Club? Yeah, anyway, so that got a lot of, oh, a lot of uh, downloads for that. But it was brilliant. We want to hear both sides of the story. Why do you say this? Why do you say this? And we just moderated the session and let the ladies talk. You know, and, and justify, but that will be the ultimate, right? We can't, and that's what we want to get to for Malaysians to be more open minded, whatever, the di and let the listeners decide and not let someone else decide for you, you know? So. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> <don't mind. laughs> no, no, I mean, this, this is very interesting. So, oh, on, on a given day, how, how do you decide? which um, difficult issues go through. I mean, on a given day, maybe like five, six different difficult ones. How do you decide which goes through or do you just put all of them out? Uh, we'll see what's in the papers as well, right? And uh, there are things, obviously, you know, what's hot, what every paper is talking about. We do that. And we also sometimes want to bring up some issues. Okay, this is something like, for example, obviously, you know, Kapal Singh's death yesterday, we had to talk about it, right? So that was, if we didn't talk about it, it was like, you know, an elephant in the room. How, how did you not talk about it? Um, you know, and you look at what's being reported around. We've got the TV on, we've got the newspaper on, what's hot, you know, what's topical. Um, and sometimes we decide as well. Uh, a big thing for us every year is the World Anti-Corruption Day, right? And we make it a big deal to make that a topic every year. You know, some things, because this is the World Anti-Corruption Day, we want to talk about it the whole week. <laughs> Right, free will, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, give, give it to yeah. um, I'm just curious, uh, because I don't listen to FM, so okay. I wanted to know how you stay alive in the media industry. Oh, how do you stay alive in yeah. the media industry? It is, okay, here's the thing, yeah, it is advertising, the main source of revenue for us, but how we want to look into other channels of income, right? And that was when, because, and, and the brand name was, oh, when, when the boss said it, I wasn't convinced uh, that we wanted to start a business school. It's like, is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? But apparently we're into our second year right now. So that's another, building on the business name, the co-branding name, we started a business school. That's another channel of distribution for us. We've also gone into events, right? tying up with the shows that we have or whatever topical, you know, like a, a, a Blue Ocean, we're going to do one as well, right? So whatever is topical, we try to, in that, and we, we've got to make sure we don't just do these conferences for fun, right? We've got to make sure that, yes, these people will really impact the people that are going to pay for it. Um, so that's another revenue. And even when we have our big event, Enterprise Breakaway, every year, uh, we want the sponsors to come up with the big money and the attendees to pay a nominal fee and that the money should come from the sponsors because they will reach out to their target audience but the attendees to pay because if it's free they won't appreciate it right but this is how we so we that's how we, we survive you know I mean that's us traditionally with other radio stations it's just advertise advertisements or they have this um, you know events uh, you know where they have events like, I know like TV3, they'll have their Jom Hebo, they'll have, I don't know if you, you know, so they'll have these events around the country and that's another way of engaging with their audience. So we don't do that. We, our strategy is with the business community and what's relevant to the brand. Thank you. Yes, no, you're not allowed. <laughs> thank, thank you for your very frank and interesting story. I was very interested in your, your life. So you've moved from a very safe, yeah. job at IBM yeah. where I guess you're doing familiar things yeah, yeah. but in a familiar environment and you've moved to a job I know you say you had two years but still it's unsafe and mm. you're doing new things and trying to change things 
I want, do you have anything to say about how it's affected your life and happiness and direction and oh, your regrets? Oh, wow. Sort of okay, the personal story. Uh, yes, you know, I've always been intrigued in business. I've also dabbled in other things as well. So I do have other sources of income, right? And thank God I, I have done other things that have given me other sources of income, which made the decision to make the transition a lot easier. So, and I read a lot. I read a lot. And, and after a certain point in life, you'll realize that money isn't everything. Uh, you've got, I've got enough to eat, I've got enough to buy shoes, I'm quite happy and, and I find that when you do, uh, it's, not, it's not just a passion, right? When you find meaning, significance in what you do, the money comes in other places. It's happened for me, you know what I mean? It just comes in other things, in other areas and because I'm so involved in it. And when, when people talk about what I do at the station, is it just interviewing me? Is it about, and you find that as well, when some people do interviews, they're so worried about how they sound, right? And when I go into the station and I interview someone, my, my thinking is, what can I get out of my interviewee that someone outside will learn and say, wow, that was a moment for me. And if I made that difference for that one person, that I managed to get that answer to one person, that gives me my purpose. And I feel like in Malaysia, very strongly, that business is going to make the difference in the country, right? D business is going to give people a reason to stay in the country if they see there is growth in that area. You know, you can't, it, business decisions, business is going to affect how policies are going to be made, right? And so if there are more, if it's a thriving business in this country, it will affect the political landscape. It will affect where the country is heading. That's how I feel, you know? and business is going to drive it, right? Um, you, you said that business is going to be very, very important. So how, how, what's your advice to aspiring engineers? Because you see, sometimes engineers don't think that doing the business is their responsibility. They, they see themselves as you know, contributing the technology. So what, what advice would you, would, you, you, would, you give, would you give them? Okay, and I know like how the, the techies, you're so involved, you're so, you know, you, you, and you're hoping that someone else will commercialize it, right? Because, you know, that it's a great product to someone, and learn about it. I always feel that you've got to, you know, everything is learned. You weren't born an engineer. You've got to learn about it. And if you don't, if you don't feel it's a natural inclination, associate yourself with people who will help you. It's about collaboration. That's the way of the future. Uh, you got to work, you know, how businesses, how things have happened. It's about collaboration. Today I'm talking to professor, something will happen, you know, and it was that first meeting. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm really excited about what you do at the university. I want to come here, right? So it's, it's going to be about that. And who are you going to be associated with? If business is an interest to you, go for it. There are a lot of apps that are being developed with someone's great idea and they don't, they don't know, they don't have the expertise to do it. So they're looking for the experts in, in the, the, the technical know-how, right? Vice versa, right? So you have to understand that. You know, when I, when I wrote that book as well, it's like, it's no excuse not to know. It's, you're going to buy a house at some stage in your life, right? You're going to need legal advice when you do that. You don't have to know the law. You may not be a lawyer, but you've got to understand the legalities behind it, right? You don't want to be taken for a ride. Same thing in business, right? So, um, and when you think about this is a great thing uh, that you've, in, you've invented or whatever, how's it going to help the business community? How's, I mean, how's it going to help the community, whatever you've invented, right? And in that process, it, it, it involves commercialization, Right for it to be mainstream, and that means business know-how. So you know, it's it's you can't be stuck in, you know, you can't stick your head in the hole, unfortunately, right? And and that's just the way the cookie crumbles, you know, as they say. So you you just have to be out there. Um, there are a lot of these little groups, startup groups, um, where people get together. I mean, at this point, sometimes you just go there, meet people. You don't have to do anything. Just connect with people. Um, who are you so associating with? Who are you getting this conversation from? You got to go out there and start start doing that. There's lots. You are on Facebook. You can find it, right? It's Google. It's, it's all there. So I make a point to do that as well. Um, <coughs> there's this particular group I just joined this week. Oh, I haven't joined, but they got me involved in something. It's like, you know, even in my world where I meet a lot of business people, but I don't actually sit down with like-minded people enough 
outside work so it's like I really have to carve out some time and get some ideas from them I'm biased more so because they don't know what I'm doing and they'll say something that was gonna change my thinking you know what I mean like a lot of businesses have been watching another industry and how that can apply to you FedEx the 24 hours you know delivery right it was uh, was the the guy Fred Smith uh, looking at how the banking industry worked with checks and that caused him to start FedEx the courier industry I don't know how that works but that was the article I read but you see so you you and if you're just gonna be stuck in your little space it's comfortable right it's comfortable but you got to look beyond that because it's it's the world guys it's the world you know and the opportunities are here opportunities in Southeast Asia it's it's this part of the world yeah um, so Thank you for a very interesting talk. Thank you. Listen to BFM. Listen to BFM. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And this is to the online students also can listen to BFM. So, Please. Uh, www.bfm.my live stream. Click on that. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.